Jay Z recently released a new album and it features a song called Story of OJ and it samples a Nina Simone track. Now, incidentally, a few years before, Monet had a track that also had the same exact sample. So, on the weekend where this album was released, Monet was insinuating that Jay Z jacked his song. What do you think about this? Well, it was, uh, first of all, I like to say great minds think alike. You know, um, Monet is, you know, a legendary hip hop artist in Africa. Uh, well revered. The album is talking about Paradigm Shift. It was released in 2008, um, and the song he was referring to was also released on the album. I mean, you know, to say that or to insinuate, because let's let's get it straight. He came out to later say that, you know, he wasn't saying anything like that. But yeah. I mean, the first set of Instagram posts he put out made it seem like Jay Z sampled, sampled, sampled not, not not sampled, but heard the sample and used the same sample. But let's be straight, right? This sample is from Nina Simone, a song called Four, Four Women. And the song has been there forever. And most important thing here is the sample had been used like five other times before Modena used it. Talib Kweli has used the sample. A couple of other guys have used the sample. So when Modena released his in 2008, did Talib Kweli and the other guys say Modena jacked their own song or jacked the sample because he had heard theirs? No. So this sample is here. You know, it's out there in space, anybody can use it. And you know, to insinuate that Hove will take the sample because he listened to your album. So there's also, you know, a story going around that it is possible that Jay-Z might have heard Mood Nine's album because someone gave it to him. And you know, great, good artists copy great artists still at the end of the day. But to say or insinuate that Jigga took the sample because you had used the sample is a stretch, is a reach. And Mood Nine was reaching there. Okay. For those and, and, and just to add, right? For you to say that you sampled Nina Simone and sold that album and didn't pay Nina Simone's estate any royalties and Jiga paid royalties, obviously, then you know Nina Simone's family should be after Modena right now because he owes them a lot of money. Okay. For those who don't know, define sample. What is sampling? Well, in, 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 in this context of hip hop, the art of sampling is the foundation of hip hop, essentially. For those who haven't watched the get down, I'll explain it to you. At a point, the DJ was the soul of hip hop music, which is rap music, right? Before it was even called rap music. And you would need a DJ to put a beat or a beat loop together for the MC to rhyme on. As at the time, people weren't producing music for hip hop artists, right? So they, there was no beats. So all they could do was to take disco records and look for an infinite loop or create an infinite loop on a disco record with two vinyls, with a turntable, two vinyls, and create a stretch of music or a stretch of beats off the beat breaks on these disco records for an MC to rap. And essentially that's how sampling started because that was sampling in that case. And it kind of grew from there to in the 90s when you had, you know, veteran producers like DJ Premier, Pete Rock, RZA, Take, music that were released in the 70s, music that were released in the 80s, right? Speed up the sample, make it very soulful and have hip hop artists record on it. So hip hop was basically built off sampling and music released in the 70s and the 80s. And it has just kind of grown from there till now, right? And basically it makes the music more interesting because it kind of captures two audiences or two generations. The new guys you've released the music for and the old guys who experienced the original record and are reliving it again. Is sampling a bad thing? Let's put that on record. Is it a bad thing? I think sampling in music generally is, first of all, a nod to classic or great music that has been released before, right? Giving it respect and giving a shout out to that kind of music, then bringing it forward to the, you know, to the very future, to the very present and making the music. I think it is great for you to take a music or a piece of work that has existed and remix it to sound, you know, as fresh and as present, as contemporary as possible. I think it takes a lot of great art to do that. And that's why you see a lot of people in Nigeria don't sample a lot because we don't create a lot of great art in this country. Yeah, can, you, can you hammer on that? Because sampling is big around the world. It's an industry on its own. People who made records 30 years ago are still are living off royalties from people sampling that works right now. How come in Nigeria we don't sample enough records? Our producers do not sample enough records. We are very organic with our music. Why is that? Because we have a fundamental problem. Fundamental problem being that we don't even have access to these songs, right? Because we don't catalog our songs properly, because we don't have a universal library, because we don't have established record labels who have these songs properly cataloged somewhere in their libraries, right? So access to these records are hard. Another thing is that radio 
is so limited that we're only playing contemporary music. We don't have radio stations that play classic Nigerian songs. Now, I'm not, I'm giving a shout out to Classic FM and Smooth FM. They do an incredible job here, but they still have to play a lot of foreign music, right? So a large part of the old school music they play are foreign songs. So we don't have one radio station dedicated to just playing classic Nigerian songs, right? Round the clock, we don't have. And, you know, it's really hard to access this music. So who were the mainstream artists in the 80s? Who were the mainstream artists in the 70s? How do we have access to their records? It's really hard. You and I went, you know, record searching the other day and yeah. we went to Jazz Hall and saw a couple of records. But these producers don't know, if those, they don't even know those records exist. So what they do is, do is focus on the present and try to create what is trending at the time. We also have a problem where if somebody creates something that's trending, we're all trying to jump on it. Almost every artist now is trying to sound like Techno or Mr. Easy. If you're not sounding like Techno or Mr. Easy and giving us that high life, Ghanaian high life influence kind of music right now, they are not doing it. And that's why, you know, that's why our music is watery and the large part of our music is watery. Only a few crop of artists understand the elements of going back because to go forward, you have to go back, right? So only a few artists understand this element of going back to look at classic records that did very well, remixing these records and making it even better. Okay. Uh, some artists in Nigeria do sample records. Yeah. Uh, example is Scales. He sampled one of Fela's records for his temporary remix featuring Bonner Boy. Yeah. Wonderful for him. He sampled an, an, an old classic track. But the problem was that he didn't clear it. And yeah. Fela's essays reached out to him to take down the video, which they did. Yeah. What did Scales do wrong uh, at, that, at that point? Essentially, Scales did not do the right thing, which is if you want to sample an existing material, you have to get clearance for it you have to sort out the publishing and you have to sort out the royalties, right? So if a song existed in 1996 and you want to take elements of that song to make your own song, you have to reach the estate of that person, if it's alive or it's not alive, or approach that person, if the record label owns the song, then or whoever owns the publishing, whatever, you have to meet them, get approval, and sort out mechanical royalties, performance royalties, and whatever, right, before you have the right to use the song. Now, because we live in an almost lawless society when it comes to entertainment business and showbiz in Nigeria, people just think they can take somebody's song, remix it and use it. Timaya recently dropped a song, I can't remember what the name of the song is, but he essentially sampled Blackie's Rosie. So you had elements of that, you know, chorus in his chorus. Now, did he pay Blackie? Did he get approval? You know, Blackie, I think, was signed to Premier Music at the time. Did he approach the label? Did he sort out the payments and all that before using the song? Because you can't take someone's creative body of work and, you know, infuse it in your own and monetize it. You have to pay from where the original content is coming from. It's like when you patent something and you want to write on that platform, you have to pay the original owners of the record, of the existing record. So that's what happens to skills essentially. They didn't approach for a last label, use the song, view elements of the song, Bonaboy used elements of the song and they released it and they started monetizing the video. And you know, on 18 Factory Records, took, out, took down the video immediately. Okay. Fela is arguably the biggest Nigerian artist of all time, right? Yeah. And, I'm, that, and his works are international. So it's even easy for a Nigerian artist to say, okay, let me sample Fela because his works are everywhere. But how about the case of when a Nigerian artist gets his hands on an obscure record done in the 1970s and the record label does not exist right now? Yeah. What does he do? Something you can always still trace a record back to somebody. Because if that record, and we're talking about international music, right? For that record to have been released, right? Someone was in charge, someone released it. So who represents that person now? Who is the great grandfather or the great grandson or the great grandchild of that person right now? Somebody has to give approval for that music or for that creative body of work to be used. And we've seen this thing happen so many times. Reminis uh, sampled Jay-Z on his Alagai Bile album. Modnai um, sampled Dina Simon. Modnai has sampled a lot of people on his albums. Um, a lot of rappers do sample like foreign artists. And guess what? This market is growing, right? We all want Africa to be on the map. We all want Nigerian music to be on the map. When it does get there, and when people are making a lot of money off this music, these publishing companies and these record labels are going to come after every Nigerian artist that has illegally sampled a song without clearing it properly. Sampling, obviously, is good, but it sounds very, very hectic, legal-wise. Should the Nigerian music industry have a body that takes care of this? 
if it is a private body that everybody agrees to in the industry that should handle and manage all these processes then it's fine but if it's going to be a government owned body i suggest no because we can't we haven't still sorted publishing distribution and all these things that the government should enable you know and create a better ecosystem for the nigerian music industry to thrive we're still suffering and struggling with that i don't think it should happen now what are the benefits of sampling music wise and business wise I mean, music-wise, you capture a larger audience, you capture a wider audience because you can tap into the old, you know, you can tap into the old generation and you can tap into the new generation. Clear example is Odusi, Desire, brilliant song, right? Features Fumbi and Tay. He used elements of Babadi's Malosa, um, I forgot the name of the song. Gombody. Gombody, right? And he took it. And fans of that song will listen to Odusi's song and really love it. So he's tapped into Babadi's fan base and he's creating his own fan base. Music-wise, that works. Business-wise, it creates a better ecosystem because everybody's making money. Because for every record Odusi sells, right? On iTunes or Apple Music or Spotify or Tidal, right? Babadi should be getting, you know, a couple or two of it. And that's, that's, at the end of the day, that makes sense. It helps the ecosystem. It helps the artists, it helps the fans and the listeners. Facts only.